You're looking to add a Gibson Accurate SG to your collection without breaking the bank? Here it is. I still think this is a really weird spec choice. Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So Epiphone's Inspired by Gibson Collection Refresh is one of the most exciting guitar gear stories of the year. The basic premise is to provide that core Gibson experience to more musicians than ever by distilling it, bottling it up, and offering it on guitars from Gibson's past and present lineup, but at much more accessible price points. The SG is Gibson's best-selling shape of all time, and that was always going to be a key part of the new product line. In fact, there are three variations on the standard. There's the regular one, a 61 standard, and this, the most unique of them all, the 61 standard with a Maestro Vibrola. Obviously, this being the flashiest one, it's the one that I had to try. So on paper, it's a step up for Epiphone, but how about in real life? And how close is it really to the Gibson playing experience? Let's take a closer look. All right, so let's do things a little differently with this reveal. Usually what I do is I'll unbox the guitar, play around with it for a few days, really get to know it. And of course I will do that for the full review. Then as far as the demo track goes, I'll kind of just play around with it, see what kind of riffs or chord progressions it inspires or what it makes me feel like playing and kind of build on it from there. And today I thought it'd be interesting to do it semi-live or at least on camera. So I'm running through the Boss Katana MK2. Thank you to Boss for sponsoring today's video. The Boss Katana is one of the most popular amps on the planet for a reason. The Katana head is a great all-in-one solution. It's got all the tones you need from acoustic simulator to metal as f You can mix and match any of the 60 built-in Boss effects. It's light, it's portable, up to 100 watts to power a 412 down to 0.5 watts for home use. Everything can be controlled by your computer, and in fact, for this demo, I'm recording everything completely silently into my computer and controlling all the tones via USB. How sick is that? And there's a ton more stuff I haven't even gone into. This section of the video could be like an hour long, but you can get more information about the Katana using the link in the description. For now, I'm just gonna plug in and see what I can come up with. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Red SG, uh, it's gotta be ACDC, right? Uh, so what do they do? They do, uh... Man, these pro buckers are kind of muddy. So what does ACDC do? Or what's the other one? Can't get a DMCA complaint if you don't play it right. Big brain moves. All right, maybe I'm going about this all wrong. Uh, like what does Airborne do? They start with like a... Uh... Yeah, and then like, the other guitar does something else like... Uh... Yeah. Okay, that can work. Whatever, I'll figure that out later. <laughs> Alright, so there's a whole bunch of nothing, but I think I've got at least one part that I like. Alright, honestly, I find rock demo tracks a lot more difficult to write than metal ones, because I feel like Metal, a lot of the riffs can stand on their own in like a two minute demo track. And most of the rock songs that I personally enjoy, what makes them uh, memorable to me is the addition and variation in the leads and the vocal lines. I don't do leads, I also don't really do vocals. A few beers in me, that's another story. But yeah, not, <laughs> not usually for this channel. All right, so I've got some semi-decent ideas, I think. I'm gonna work on it off camera, and I'll see you back here for the demo track.
Alright, so an SG Standard is kind of like a Ferrari. They look great in other colors, but realistically, red's where it's at. I mean, it's a crazy nice color. A lot of times, import guitars and Epiphone is particularly guilty of this. The color is way brighter, more saturated, with less depth compared to the colors on the higher-end versions. Take the Slash Anaconda Burst, for example. Not the case here. They've, uh, they've nailed it. The one thing is, since this is the more affordable version, it's not gonna be a one or probably even two-piece body. It's probably gonna be a multi-piece body, and when you've got a red transparent stain, that doesn't always look great. So there's actually a veneer over the top and the back of the body to give it a cleaner look. Now, the veneer is darker than the actual body wood and doesn't extend over the bevels, so you've got two shades of red going on. From a distance, it's not distracting, but up close, and I'm not saying it looks bad, you can definitely tell that this is the more affordable version. Something else that I noticed, one of the pickguard screws was at an angle and not screwed in all the way. I mean, it's a $500 guitar, it's just one of those things. Alright, so last week, as of filming, I unboxed a bunch of different Inspired by Gibson Collection Epiphones, including three SGs. This 61 Standard, the Custom, and the modern figured. And I asked you guys to vote which ones you were most hyped about. Not gonna lie, this one uh, lost by a lot. But the reason I'm demoing it first is, well, one, I really like it. And two, at least going by the specs on paper, this is the one that's most similar to my trusty old 2006 G400 Custom. Now, I've long since swapped whatever the stock pickups were out for something more suited for the chugs, but I thought it would be fun to at least compare the build between the old and the new. So if you like the way that I go over this standard 61, I'll also be going over a bunch more guitars in the lineup, including a Firebird neck through for $5.99, yeah. Make sure you're subscribed and you've got the bell ticked for all notifications because you do not want to miss that. And now let's get into specs. Mahogany body, set mahogany neck, rosewood fingerboard with 22 medium jumbo frets and a 12 inch radius. Now, right off the bat, I started noticing some interesting differences. My 2006 made in Korea has a slightly different body shape to the new Inspire by Gibson one? Like this 2021 is closer to an actual Gibson SG. For one, the horns are slightly rounded on my custom, whereas on the 61 standard they're more pointy, like on a Gibson. The body is also slightly wider on my 2006. You can see that with the positioning of the control knobs and especially the pick guard relative to the edge of the body. The body bevels are also less pronounced on the 2006. They don't come quite as deep on the horns and the bottom only makes it to about half the length of the pickguard. The bottom horn sticks further out on the white one too. So realistically though, not too different. I didn't even notice when I was unboxing the new guitars, even though I've had my G400 for like 14 years at this point. The takeaway is that the 2020 Epiphone inspired by Gibson SG bodies are a lot more accurate to their Gibson counterparts from where they were in the mid 2000s. Or it could be a Korea versus China factory thing, who knows? The point is there's a certain degree of accuracy you can expect now, from the new lineup SGs. That being said, despite both neck shapes being labeled as slim tapered, they're not very similar at all, and neither feel like any Gibson slim taper I've played either. So a Gibson one is like slim, but at the same time pretty rounded, like it's pretty self-explanatory. The one on my G400 is basically a 50s rounded, it's a massive baseball neck, you can imagine how fun learning Lamb of God Sacrament riffs was on that. Meanwhile, this 2020 inspired by Gibson, I don't know when Epiphone started doing this for Slim Tapers. It's kind of got a D shape, like it's flat-ish on the back. I'll be honest with you, I don't really like it. It feels weird, and the round non-flat neck shape is one of the reasons I like my Gibson so much. Also, I'm not too clear as to why they've done this, especially on a series that's supposed to be inspired by Gibson, like the Gibson experience at an affordable price point. At least for me, the neck shape is a massive part of that playing experience. It's not like they haven't made guitars with rounded slim tapers before. They're totally capable of doing it, uh, but they didn't. I just find it a really weird decision to go with a different neck shape when you're trying to make an affordable Gibson SG standard. And again, similar to the point that I was making with the veneer, I'm not saying that it's bad. I can see a lot of people actually preferring this neck profile with the flattish back. I'm just saying, despite the name, it's a big way I think this feels different to playing a Gibson. And another big difference is the finish. So Gibsons come with a nitro finish, Epiphone with poly. I do prefer the nitro, but honestly, I don't think it's a huge deal. The one thing is poly can feel a bit sticky on the back of the neck, but that's easily rectified with the rough side of a Scotch-Brite sponge or some fine grit sandpaper. Then as far as frets go, 
Not gonna lie, there were some Epiphones from this year and last year that left a lot to be desired. This one though, it's pretty decent. It didn't blow me away, didn't feel like it was gonna slice my hand open either. In terms of size, they're quite wide. Like I don't have a current year Gibson here for a direct comparison, but I always feel like the frets on Gibsons are kind of narrow and I don't feel that here. So not quite fretless wonder vibes, but it is trending in that direction. Then for 2020, Epiphone's decided it's time to level the hell up when it comes to features. It wasn't really a big deal at the upper level of the product catalog, but for the mid-range, historically, you had workable, if unimpressive, components. One of my favorite things about the Inspired by Gibson collection is that at a minimum, every guitar comes with a Graftech nut. That's one of the main things I've been meaning to replace on my G400 forever. Look at this piece of plastic shit. And a nut replacement is basically something you'd have to factor in when considering buying an older Epiphone. Yeah, so it's great because that is no longer an issue. The Epiphone tuners feel surprisingly high quality. Like I was a bit skeptical how they would compare to Grover's, which are found on the modern side of the lineup. I was expecting them to be okay at best, but they're actually really satisfying. Good turn resistance, no jumpiness. The tuning keys are pretty ugly, but they're vintage correct. And all this leads us to the main star of the show, the Maestro Vibrola. It just looks really, really cool. It's big and flashy and that 60s Americana style. Big, giant engraved plate with the Epiphone logo. It's also something I would never recommend to use live ever. At least stock. My hope was that with the Graftech nut, this would be more usable than it is on my white guitar. And to be honest, it is, but that's also a really low bar. You basically shine light on the G400 and the photons knock the damn thing out of tune. For this, very, very delicate vibrola use is actually okay. The problem is with the bridge saddles. It doesn't take too much to push the thing too far, and you can hear the strings scrape along the saddles then get stuck out of tune. So personally, I would get this over the standard 61 because I think it looks cooler. I would just never touch the Maestro. But if you actually wanna use the Vibrola mechanism, what I would suggest is also picking up a roller bridge replacement where the saddles will allow the strings to move without getting stuck. For other electronics, the pots feel kind of amazing. I was really surprised, then I remembered, duh, Epiphone's moved to CTS this year, which is what Gibson uses. Just going back and forth between this and the 2006, it's clear that the cheap, scratchy pots are living on extremely limited borrowed time. Although you will notice the Korean one has a completely shielded cavity. The new pots are a huge upgrade. Just like a lot of other guitars in the Inspired by Gibson range, we've got a Pro Bucker 2 and 3 for the pickups. So here's what they sound like outside of the demo mix. <laughs> So I'd be lying if I said I liked the Pro Buckers. I find them pretty muddy, they're not for me, which is interesting because I find a lot of Gibson pickups to be really bright. So yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna plead the fifth and have you decide for yourself uh, what you think about those. So this SG Standard 61 Maestro Vibrola is a pretty clear indicator of Epiphone's potential. 
for this lineup. The Gibson version goes for two grand new. Epiphone have done it for about a quarter that price. That's not to say you're getting the same guitar for that money, but the essence is still here. For the price, I don't mind that the pickups aren't for me, but I will admit it is disappointing the neck shape isn't the same as what you'd find on the Gibson. I still think this is a really weird spec choice. Overall though, this succeeds at what it was built for. You're looking to add a Gibson Accurate SG to your collection without breaking the bank? Here it is. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are of course just my opinions. I'd love to know what you think. So let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's a big red button down there and really helps out. You can also hit the bell for all notifications. You can also check the bell for all notifications. That way YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. Thanks to Epiphone for sending this guitar out, to Boss for sponsoring the video, and to Luke for mixing everything. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video. And I think I've managed to fit that all into 20 seconds because that's the maximum length of the YouTube outro card.